All right, I wanted to make a real quick video on how to use a simple oscilloscope to monitor your peak envelope power using an RF sampler. You can see the RF sampler uh, here, uh, which is usually connected into the back of the uh, RF amplifier, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I moved it out of the way so we could uh, see it and start to uh, kind of interact with the methods of uh, looking at power. So the RF sampler here is uh, connected to channel 2 of the oscilloscope. And uh, what's interesting here, if we notice, now the watt meter below is referencing uh, right around 50 watts of carrier power. So as we start to adjust the oscilloscope, what I want to do is move the uh, uh, scope positioning and uh, controls so that they equal uh, in this case, plus and minus two divisions uh, at 50 watts as seen here. So plus and minus two divisions of deflection on the oscilloscope. Now in this reference is a uh, reference to the power level of 50 watts as seen by the watt meter below. Okay, this is a test transmission. A uh, test transmission for uh, the oscilloscope demonstration. Uh, you can see that there's uh, some repetitive uh, modulated envelopes here. Uh, with our uh, timing base that we're using. And in this case, uh, the modulation peaks are expanding to plus and minus two divisions on the oscilloscope, indicating that at that moment in time, the amount of peak envelope power we're seeing on the oscilloscope is that of what we saw uh, with the carrier power level on the watt meter. And in this case, with this lower power setting, uh, they're, they're uh, tracking pretty well. You can almost see 50 watts peak envelope power uh, as a uh, confirmation that at this uh, power level, uh, this meter uh, responds fairly well, uh, even with the, uh, the modulation being a fairly low duty cycle, and it's able to capture those peaks. There's many times where that's definitely not the case, and by using this technique, uh, we could definitely uh, gauge how much power we're, uh, we're utilizing in a much more accurate uh, uh, confirmation. Okay, so that was uh, one method, and then I'd like to show another method uh, uh, that uh, is also very useful, and it's more of a dynamic method here. Uh, we're going to be referencing a, uh, a multiple of uh, four times power. So what we want to do, you can see the watt meter indicating around 10 watts, so we'll set the scope control to plus and minus one division. So plus and minus one division of uh, deflection will equal 10 watts and at our plus and minus two divisions it will be four times that uh, carrier power and so that we can start to reference our power level dynamically on the oscilloscope just like that seen uh, uh, at the moment you can see our 10 watts is now multiplied times four and the watt meter is confirming that that's 40 watts so it's an interesting way of uh, uh, doing it more dynamically Again, 10 watts to plus and minus one division, and then uh, at the plus and minus two divisions, that's a multiple of four. So let's look at a, uh, a sideband signal now using that method, and we'll be peaking to 40 watts uh, instead of uh, uh, just the plus and minus one division at 10 watts. Okay, this is a uh, test uh, transmission. Watts. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We can see our modulation at the current uh, state is still 10 watts. Uh, with our uh, power level that we uh, calibrated for. However, if we want to see uh, 40 watts in this case, we can easily do so. We'll increase our power till the uh, modulated envelope uh, starts to uh, come up to plus and minus two divisions, as you're seeing now. And now we're indicating uh, around 40 watts, which is a multiple of four, or four times as compared to what we were at the reference level at the carrier of plus and minus one division. So if we were to uh, look at the power level in a carrier now, it would be uh, plus and minus two divisions as well. I can see that uh, just uh, uh, looking a little close on the pattern, I'm just exceeding plus and minus two divisions in this example. So it's probably just slightly over 40 watts. But this is the uh, more dynamic way to do it, which uh, has some useful applications as well especially for AM uh, modulation and other uh, times where your meter uh, may not uh, go uh, very well into a certain direction. 
And if you guys were interested in seeing where that RF sampler came from, uh, here's a website I put together uh, called cleanrf.com. Pretty easy to uh, get to. Uh, you can go here and it's got quite a hefty uh, applications page on how to monitor uh, signals on both uh, single sideband and AM. A lot of uh, different visual aids and descriptions of uh, what's happening. Here's some stuff on amplifier linearity and other factors. So pretty good uh, uh, information. It's uh, downloadable. Uh, anybody can uh, go and download that. The uh, actual device uh, came from here and it's quite a variety of things. Here's the uh, RF sampler and we can go ahead and like click on that and see uh, come up to a larger image here uh, after the uh, thumbnail image so pretty easy to uh, look at that and the rest of uh, the, de the devices. The uh, demodulator that we saw was kind of put together here and it was two, uh, two devices there that we saw that I usually wrap around the amplifier that uh, talk to uh, talk about in a different uh, video. So anyway, that's the uh, CleanRF uh, website and where the sampler came from. I just wanted to uh, mention that before I uh, edited the uh, video down. All right, well, that was a pretty quick video demonstration on peak envelope power and monitoring on an oscilloscope, which is pretty easy and real handy to confirm. You can do it with any power level once referenced. 7-3.